Ferrari Land is the second theme park at the Port Aventura Resort in Spain. This is an ultra-compact park themed to the famous sports car. It is most famous for being home to the tallest and fastest coaster in all of Europe with Red Force. While all of this sounds great on paper, should this have been built as its own separate theme park, or should it have been built as a land inside the original Port Aventura theme park? In this video, I will ponder that question and review this theme park. Ferrari World Abu Dhabi opened in late 2010 as the world's first theme park themed to Ferraris. This park was extremely well received for its sleek architecture and racing experiences. This park is also famous for a very fast coaster in Formula Rosa that still holds the title as the world's fastest coaster. I have been fortunate enough to have visited this park, I made a review about it, and there was no shortage of things to fill an entire day there. Flash forward to 2014, Port Aventura announced they would be building the world's second park themed to the brand in Ferrari Land. This park would open in 2017. Port Aventura Park originally opened in 1995, and the Costa Caribe Water Park opened in 2002. This was already one of the best theme park resorts in all of Europe, and Ferrari Land would only bolster that claim. But people immediately pointed to one issue with the park from day one, its size. Ferrari Land would span roughly 19 acres. This was one third the size of Ferrari World, or more pertinent in this case, roughly one seventh of the size of Port Aventura Park. And even after some additions, the park still has roughly a dozen rides total. For these reasons, there were a lot of questions why it wasn't tacked onto the main park as an additional land. I would probably think that way if the resort treated this park as an equal to the main park. Fortunately, they do not. This park has limited operations, shorter hours, and subsequently, Ferrari Land has way lower admission prices. Day tickets will cost you 20 to 22 euros. That's it. That's more than fair given what this park has to offer. You can also get a park hopper ticket, and Ferrari Land is usually just an extra 10 or so euros on top of Port Aventura. That is a great deal. View this more as a land that has an upcharge rather than a full fledged theme park. That really is what it is. One interesting tidbit is admission for on site guests. Those staying at the Port Aventura Hotel can visit the main park every single day of their stay. However, they only get one day of Ferrari Land included. I'm guessing that's due to the park's more limited capacity. You of course can buy extra day tickets if you want to go multiple times though. Ferrari Land is conveniently located next to the main park. You have the main entrance accessible from the resort hub, but you also have a special entrance from within Port Aventura for guests with park hopper tickets as well. This site used to be a section of the resort's parking lot, but you wouldn't be able to tell from inside. This park looks really nice. It starts with the entry archway. It has the iconic Ferrari red and has a smooth, futuristic design. In the distance, you have Red Force looming over everything. It is so picturesque. The center of the park has this large modern building housing a few attractions. Then the main midway forms a loop around it. You have a mix of racing themed buildings and more impressively, some classic Italian architecture. Then the whole park is brick pavers as opposed to your usual asphalt, which is a very nice touch. The expansion area behind Red Force is not dressed as nicely as the rest of the park, but the entire place is bright, clean, and colorful. My one issue with this park's overall appearance is the significant lack of shade. This is an issue for almost every new park, but it is especially apparent when you're located in a country that gets as hot as Spain. It feels like an oven walking around this park on a summer day. That is why I really like the operational change that made for the 2023 season. Ferrari Land will now be open from 4pm until 10pm. This park has always been open for just 5 to 6 hours. Typically, they would open around 10 or 11 a.m. and be closed by 4 or 5 p.m. This meant the operating hours directly clashed with those of the main park. Now, there are many days where Ferrari Land will stay open several hours later than the main park. This makes the park hopper ticket a much better value because it extends your overall park day. I imagine there will be a spike in crowds once the main park closes but that's fine given how people traditionally tour this park. Because of the lower quantity of attractions, many people would leave the park after just a few hours, making it a complete ghost town at the end of the night. This past year, my fiancé and I entered the park for the last two hours, and every single attraction was basically a walk-on. 
the worst line was Red Force at just 5 minutes. I have only visited this park on off-peak days, so crowds have never been an issue for me. But I have heard this park can be absolutely frustrating to visit on busy days. With so few rides to soak up the crowds, everything can get slammed. If you visit on one of those days, I strongly recommend buying an express pass. It'll cost you 21 to 23 euros per person per day. It allows you to skip the line for each major attraction once. If you don't spring for the express pass and the park is crowded, I would recommend joining the rope drop crowd for Red Force. And it is worth noting people will sprint to this ride in the morning. There are four operational notes when it comes to Red Force that could impact how you tour this park. First, Red Force is far more reliable than the other large-scale intimate accelerator coasters. I don't think I've ever seen this ride close for mechanical issues in any of my visits. Two, the ride will close in a consistent rain though. This is what happens with a lot of the other big launch coasters out there for the comfort of guests. Three, this coaster does have a single rider line. But unlike the rides in the main park, you cannot access it until you've waded through a majority of the standby line. At that point, the main queue has only another 15 or so minutes to go, so there isn't too much incentive to split up. 4. Red Force's seating is on a first-come basis. This can make it tricky to get the front row. After each cycle, the park admits just enough people into the station to fill the next train. They usually will not let you wait an extra cycle. So the only way to guarantee a front row ride is to be at the front of the turnstiles. The easiest way is to be the first person in line in the morning by running over there. Again, people are going to sprint. Or you have to count the number of people ahead of you and let some people pass. Feeling the full force of Red Force's 112 mile per hour or 180 km per hour launch in the front row is a must. So it is worth the hassle. What else should you know about this park's operations? Two other things I want to point out. First, this park is supposed to keep lines open until closing, but I have noticed a few rides will close 5 or so minutes early, so if you want to get that last ride, give yourself some buffer. Second, the two simulator rides in the center of the park have an ungodly amount of pre-shows and holding areas. Even if the line appears to be short, it may still take a half hour to get on the attraction if you have to go through each and every one of them. Prioritize the other attractions at opening that can accommodate you faster. On that note, let's hop into the attraction offerings. As I said before, Ferrari Land doesn't have too many rides, but to their credit, they are very balanced between all thrill levels. For the adrenaline junkies, you have Red Force. This coaster features the fastest LSM launch in the world. While it doesn't have the same initial kick as a hydraulic launch, you have more than enough time to appreciate all that speed. This launch has some serious power by the end, and it forces the skin on your face back. Then you have the giant top hat. You get a stunning view of the Mediterranean, plus awesome airtime. You pop out of your seat going over the top, and then you float the whole way down, because the descent doesn't have the extra twist like the American Strata coasters. And then as a bonus, you have an extra burst of airtime when you hop into the brake run. This coaster is super short, but it's an absolute rush. The other big thrill ride is Thrill Towers. This is a pair of 18 story tall SNS drop towers. One is a space shot that shoots you up. The other is a turbo drop that blasts you down. While both rides have a great view and some airtime, this ride does feel a little redundant with the far superior drop tower and Hurricane Condor located next door at Port Aventura. For family rides, you have the Marinello Grand Race Tracked Car Ride, plus the two aforementioned simulators. Flying Dreams is the far better of the two. This is a flying theater having all the elements people love about Soarin'. Crisp visuals, scents, mist effects, and well-synchronized motion. There are better flying theaters out there, but these type of rides are almost always enjoyable. Racing Legends feels like one of those old-school universal simulators. You board a smaller vehicle and watch a film about racing on the big screen. The motion was good and the visuals are fine, but I'd prefer to wait for the Flying Theater because both have that extended pre-boarding experience. This park did not open with much for kids. This is why their expansion in 2018 addressed this issue. You have a handful of car-themed flat rides, a play area, and more notably, Junior Red Force. This is an SBF Visa Junior Coaster. Adults can ride without a kid if you want the credit. The coaster is smooth, and that Helix actually has some laterals. 
Beyond the rides, there are a few other things to do. You have the occasional show. These take place next to the midways and add some extra energy as you walk around. Then you also have the Ferrari Museum, plus some upcharge experiences like a realistic racing simulator. Moving on to the food, this was a sore subject for me in 2022. When I visited in 2017, I got these amazing cannellones at Pit Lane. If you've never had them, they tasted like stuffed shells. However, they were removed from the menu in my recent visit. I tried the lasagna hoping it would taste similar, but it tasted a lot cheaper. Pit Lane is a quick service restaurant. Alternatively, you can have a sit-down meal at Ristorante Cavallino, and they claim to have authentic Italian food, but I personally haven't tried it. Another thing worth pointing out is the merchandise. Souvenirs are very overpriced here. We're talking t-shirts costing $50 expensive and I think it's due to the Ferrari licensing. The same thing happened at Ferrari World. Meanwhile, the adjacent Port Aventura Park has items more in line with what you'd see at other theme parks. So do I recommend Ferrari Land? Yes I do. This park is small, no denying that, and you may only need 2-3 to three hours here if crowds are light, but you have to look at the big picture. Port Aventura is one of the best theme parks out there. That place is a must visit. So while you're already at the resort, you absolutely should pop into Ferrari Land, especially because the tickets are very reasonable for what the park offers. I'd pay that alone just to experience Red Force. Then you have some additional rides and a nice overall appearance as a bonus. Before wrapping this review up, I want to note that I'll have a far larger review for Port Aventura coming out next week. This will not only cover the far larger and superior main park, but it will also touch on the other details about the resort, including hotels and transportation. So those are my thoughts on Ferrari Land, the second theme park at Port Aventura World in Spain. What are your thoughts on this park? Do you think it's fine as a separate gate? Or do you think it should have been part of the main park? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos, here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.